so uh, starting with the first question it asks you to consider a computer system with 40 bit virtual addressing and page size of 16 kilobytes if the computer system has a one level page table per process and each page table entry requires 48 bits then the size of the per process page table is dash mb so again both of them are numerical type questions so you are not provided any option and you have to solve and enter the answer so since it is given in this question that it is a 40 bit virtual addressing system so what does it mean 40 bit addressing system This only means that the total address space that would be present is of 2 raised to power 40 words. So with 40 different bits, how many different addresses or total address space, the size of the total address space that can be provided can be 2 raised to power 40. Okay, 2 raised to power 40 combinations are possible. 2 raised to power 40 words are possible which is equivalent of 2 raised to power 40 bytes. Okay, now one very big mistake that students generally do in such questions and especially when converting from 40 bit uh, to total address space, here you do not have to see that since it is given it is a 40 bit system so you write 2 raised to power 40 bits. No, for any address space the basic unit or basic addressable unit is words and by default this value the value of words is taken to be as bytes so no matter how it is given to you even if it is written that it is a n bit system you don't have to be confused between bits and bytes the total size of address space is always in terms of words and here by default a word is taken as byte a single byte unless specified otherwise okay so total uh, address space this is the address space that we get the size of the address space now what information is provided to us about the page size that the page size is of 16 kilobytes so 16 kilobytes means 2 raised to power 4 into 2 raised to power 10 bytes okay 1 kilobyte is equal to 2 raised to power 10 bytes which is equal to 2 raised to power 14 bytes so this is the size of each page okay each page is of 2 raised to power 14 bytes now the next thing that is provided in the question to us is that it is a one level page table per process and each page table requires 48 bits so each page table entry requires 48 bits so 48 bits you have to convert it into bytes because everything is in bytes so 48 bits means 48 divided by 8 which is equal to 6 bytes all right now putting all this information together the total pages in a page table are given by the total amount of address space that we have divided by the size of each page okay so if you have a large address space and each page takes a certain amount of space within that address space you have to divide the total value of the address space total size per the size of each page so this comes out to be 2 raised to power 40 divided by 2 raised to power 14 and this value would be 2 raised to power 26 so total number of pages in one page table is 2 raised to power 26 now within each page table we know that each entry requires 6 bytes alright so the total page table size is the number of entries which is this multiplied by the amount or the size of each entry which is this 
So 2 raised to power 26 multiplied by 6 bytes and since we have to tell the answer in MBs, so converting it into MBs, 2 raised to power 20 is 1 MB. Okay, multiplied by 2 raised to power 6 coming from this 26 multiplied by 6. So this total value when you calculate 2 raised to power 6 is 64. 64 into 6 would give you 384. So 384 MB would be the answer. So it is not at all a tricky question. The things to remember here are that uh, you don't have to confuse between bits and bytes. If it is given to you, it is a 40 bit addressing system. You have to consider the basic addressing unit as words and take the default value of one word equal to one byte. So what we have done is first we have calculated the size of the page table. Total size of the page table would be the total number of pages multiplied by the amount of space required by each page. So amount of space required by each page is 6 bytes. Total number of pages how we have calculated the total address space divided by the 16 KB page size that we are given. Okay, so uh, you can thoroughly go through the question and you will realize that it is not very confusing. You have to just put together all the information. So now coming to the second question. The second question says that consider a disk queue with requests for input output to blocks on cylinders in this particular order. Okay, the CLOOK scheduling algorithm is used the head is initially at cylinder 63 moving towards larger cylinder numbers on its servicing pass. The cylinders are numbered from 0 to 199 and total head movement in number of cylinders incurred while servicing these requests is. Okay, so initially we are given a certain set of requests, IO requests and we have to service these requests using CLOOK scheduling algorithm. So let's draw how the head movement will occur through all these requests. We have a request at 10. Since we have the timeline from 0 to 199, so we'll write down all the values. Then we have a request at 38, 47, 63 the head is currently placed here and it is moving towards 199 towards larger cylinder numbers okay then at 92 then at 121 191 and the cylinders are numbered from 0 to 199 so in case of CLOOK scheduling algorithm how does the head actually move it the head actually moves only in one direction if we actually see the uh, overall performance of the head. Okay, so what do I mean by this? When we see CLOOK scheduling algorithm, we start from one end, the head moves towards the other end and services all the requests that come in its way. It never reaches the final end. Okay, so if it is going from zero the in, in increasing direction from 0 to 199 it will start from the least numbered request and proceed towards the largest numbered request and it will stop at the request having the largest number and in between it will service all the request then if a request comes which is smaller in number so what it will do it will again turn move to the starting end and again service all the requests in that direction only okay so technically the head only moves in one direction so let's start with this question and start servicing all the requests one by one and find out what will be the total time incurred and the total head movement in servicing all these requests so we start from 63 next the cylinder moves towards the larger number larger numbered cylinder so it would move towards right so this line the, that the cylinder is moving from 63 to larger cylinder numbers tells you the initial direction of the head movement and in 
what direction it will always function okay so it starts at 63 it moves towards right towards 87 because the first request that lies in its way to right is 87 it will service this request then after when it after servicing 87 it proceeds right goes to 92 then 121 and then 191 so it goes like this goes like this now it has more requests to service which are lower in number 10 11 38 and 47 so it will not turn back and service this from 47 to 38 to 11 to 10 no it will directly come back to the request having the smallest number service this request and then move in the same direction again it now services 11 then it services 38 and at the end it services 47 so this is how the head will move and what would be the total head movements or the amount that the head movement will take from 63 to 87 the total amount of head movement would be 87 minus 63 which is 24 okay then 92 minus 87 would come out to be 5 121 minus 92 is 29 then 191 minus 121 is 70 now when it goes from 191 to 10 the total head movement is 181 from 10 to 11 it is 1 from 11 to 38 it is 27 from 38 to 47 it is 9 so what is the total head movement total comes out to be the sum of all of them so 24 plus 5 plus 29 plus 70 plus 181 plus 1 plus 27 and plus 9 when you calculate the sum, you'll get the result as 346. Alright, so uh, this is a basic uh, question on the CLOOK uh, algorithm for this scheduling. That was not at all tricky and you just need to know the concept behind CLOOK algorithm. First question out of them is based on threads. So we have to tell threads of a process share what out of the following so in respect to threads you must keep in mind that whenever we talk about threads threads of a process share everything except the stack and the register parts all right so this is an important point stack of a sorry threads of a process share everything the code section, the data section, except the stack and the registers. All right, because the stack is used for its own function calls and saving of parameters, and the register is used for the thread's own intermediate values and parameters values that it uses to store you. Uh, while performing the calculation and when I say everything here I mean it shares the code section multiple threads of the same process share the code section the data section and the heap as well so for this question you'll have to consider which of the following choices says the correct answer so global variables but not heap here global variables will refer to the data global variables but not heap which is not right heap but not global variables again not right neither global variables nor heap no both heap and global variables yes so the answer is d so in respect to threads you have to keep in mind that only the stack and the registers are not shared apart from that every other thing is shared by the threads of a process now next, coming to the next question, consider the following CPU processes with arrival times in milliseconds and length of CPU bursts in milliseconds as given as following. If preemptive shortest remaining time first scheduling is used to schedule the processes, the average waiting time across all processes is this much milliseconds. This is a question in which you have to find out the correct answer and fill in the blanks and write down in the question. 
that is given to you on in the exam all right so first we'll make a gan chart for this since it is shortest remaining time first at time zero since only process one is present it will keep on executing till the arrival of the next process process two at this time till time three the remaining time for process one is four and the remaining time for process two is three so process two will be executed now as even when the time progresses and process 3 and 4 come along still the remaining time for process 2 will be the shortest because at time 3 also sorry at time 5 also the remaining time for process 2 will be 1 which is shorter than the remaining 2 and all right so the process number 2 completes till time period 6 then process 4 is executed because it is the shortest then we see that process 1 would be executed because 4 is the remaining time that is less than the remaining time of process 3 which is 5. So process 1 executes till time 12 and last is process 3 again which executes till time 17. 12 plus 5, 17. Alright, so now let's quickly make the chart for arrival times. 80 is the arrival time, BT is the burst time, then CT is the completion time, turnaround time and the last would be waiting time. Alright, we have to find the average waiting time. Now let's quickly write down process number 1, process number 2, process 3 and process 4 arrival times. You are mentioned here 0, 3, 5 and 6 burst time 7, 3, 5 and 2. Completion time for process 1 is 12. You have to see from the extreme right. For process 2 it is 6. For process 3 it is 17. And for process 4 it is 8. Alright. Now turn around time is given by completion time minus the arrival time so finding out these value completion time minus arrival time 12 6 minus 3 is 3 17 minus 5 is 12 8 minus 6 is 2 waiting time is given by turnaround time minus the burst time all right so turnaround time minus burst time gives you 5 here 3 minus 3 is 0 12 minus 5 gives you 7 again and this is 0. So average waiting time would come out to be 5 plus 0 plus 7 plus 0 divided by 4 which is 12 by 4 which is 3. Alright and you, you can fill 3 here. So this was the way you will find out the average waiting time across all the processes in this case. These are very simple questions. You just need to f know what are the basics of operating system regarding these two questions and you will be able to do them very quickly and without any mistakes in your questions. Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned to Easy Engineering classes for more lectures on gate computer science previous year solved questions that we are doing subject wise. Subscribe to our channel and keep watching. Thank you.